Good morning. Welcome to Holy Spirit Catholic Church, where we celebrate the sacred liturgy of the eighth Sunday in ordinary time. Please rise and, and let's greet each other, and while we're doing it, silence our cell phones. Let's join in singing number 735, Rejoice, the Lord is King. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. This morning we have the opportunity to share with our catechumen and candidates the special blessings and then the right of sending to send them to the bishop to be recognized as they finish or continue toward Easter. So I would ask our catechumen and candidates and their sponsors to please come forward. Yeah, you've already, yeah. Church joyfully welcomes today those who will be received into the order of catechumen. In the months to come, they will prepare for their initiation in the Christian faith by baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist. We also greet today those who already with us are one by baptism and now wish to complete their Christian initiation through confirmation and Eucharist, or to be received into full communion with the Catholic Church. For all of these, we give thanks and praise to God, who has led them by various paths to oneness and faith. Dear candidates, catechumen, you are welcomed in the name of Christ. So I ask each of you, what is your name? And what do you ask of God's church? And what does faith offer you? And what do you ask of God's church? To be accepted. Yes. What is your name? And what do you ask of God's church? What does faith offer you? And what do you ask of God's church? To be accepted. What is your name? 
What do you ask of God's church? No, what do you ask? Yeah, what do you ask of God's church? <laughs> All right. What does faith offer you? And what do you ask of God's church? And what is your name? And what do you ask of God's church? What does faith offer you? And what do you ask of God's church? God is our creator, and in him all living things have their existence. He enlightens our minds so that we may come to know and worship him. He has sent his faithful witness, Jesus Christ, to announce to us what he has seen and heard, the mysteries of heaven and earth. Since you acknowledge with joy that Christ has come, now is time to hear his word so that you may possess eternal life, and by beginning in his company, know God and to love your neighbor. Are you ready to, with the help of God, to live this life? Now, I would ask the uh, sponsors, you now present, sponsors and godparents, you now present these candidates and catechumen. Are you who gathered here ready to give them your support to follow Christ? God, the Father of mercies, we thank you for these, your servants. You have brought and summoned them in many ways, and they have turned to seek you. You have called them today, and they answered in our presence, and so we praise you, Lord, and we bless you. Now, if the godparents or sponsor will face the catechumen or candidate to receive a sign of your new way of life. Receive the sign of the cross on your forehead. It is Christ himself who now strengthens you with the sign of his love. Learn to know him and follow him. Receive the sign of the cross on your ears that you may hear the voice of the Lord. Receive the sign of the cross on your eyes that you may see the glory of God. Receive the sign of the cross on your lips, that you may respond to the word of God. Receive the sign of the cross over your heart, that Christ may dwell there by faith. Receive the sign of the cross on your shoulder, that you may bear the gentle yoke of Christ. Receive the sign of the cross on your hands, that Christ may be known in the work which you do. Receive the sign of the cross on your feet, that you may walk in the way of Christ. I sign you with the sign of eternal life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the cross and resurrection of your Son, you have given life to your people. Your servants have received the sign of the cross. Make them living proof of its saving power and help them to persevere in the footsteps of Christ. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. To God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God. Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
Let us pray. Lord, guide the course of world events and give your church the joy and peace of serving you in freedom. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the book of Siraj. When a sieve is shaken, the husks appear. So do one's faults when one speaks. As the test of what the potter molds is in the furnace, so in tribulation is a test of the just. The fruit of a tree shows the care it has had. So too does one's speech declose disclose the bent of one's mind. Praise no one before he speaks, for it is then that people are tested. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name most high, to proclaim your kindness at dawn and your faithfulness throughout the night. Lord, it is good to give. The just shall flourish like the palm tree, like a cedar of Lebanon shall he grow. They that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. For it is good to give. They shall bear fruit even in old age. Vigorous and sturdy shall they be, declaring how just is the Lord, my rock in whom there is no wrong. Lord, it is good to give. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, when this which is corruptible clothes itself with incorruptibility, and this which is mortal clothes itself with immortality, then the word 
that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your siding? The siding of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be firm, steadfast, always fully devoted to the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. in the world as you hold on to the word of life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into the pit? No disciple is superior to the teacher, but when fully trained, every disciple will be like his teacher. Why do you go and notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own. How could you say to your brother, brother, let me remove that splinter in your eye when you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye, you hypocrite? Remove the wooden beam from your eye first. Then you will see clearly to remove the splinter in your brother's eye. A good tree does not bear rotten fruit, nor does a rotten tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its fruit, but people do not pick figs from the thorn bushes, nor do they gather grapes from brambles. A good person out of the store of goodness of his heart produces good, but an evil person out of a store of evil produces evil. For from the fullness of the heart the mouth speaks. The Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Today's reading from the book of Sirach. Sirach is one of the newer books in the Old Testament, written much closer to the time of the coming of the Messiah than like Jeremiah. Uh, Isaiah, the prophets, much closer to New Testament times. And it is written at a time when God's people are in turmoil. And it is written something new, taking the teaching of Moses and now combining that with this new wisdom literature that is coming from the Greek-speaking Jewish community and, and combining those to give a new insight. 
a primary theme of Sirach is character that is built, and especially character that is built and tried through trial and difficulty. The author of Sirach gives several images to help us focus on integrity of character. Last night, we had confirmation, and we had 14 of our fifth graders being confirmed. And I was going to bring a prop up for the homily, and I forgot to bring it up. But I substituted something. But this morning, at 8 o'clock mass, Larry was the sacristan, and, and he was very gracious when he appeared in the sacristy holding a coffee filter and never said, why did you have this up at the altar? He just pretended it was normal. But I was going to show, because I asked all 14 of the fifth graders, I said, do any of you know, if you know what a sieve is, raise your hand. Not a clue. I forgot to bring mine up, but the only thing I could find to substitute was the big coffee filter from downstairs. So, but that, that image that the author of Sirach uses, see, I use a sieve when I'm making lentil soup. I put the lentils in, then hot water, and any of the dirt or any of that other stuff is sifted out. I can also see sometimes there are those little stones that get in there that I don't want to bite down on in my soup. So I'd rather catch them early and get them out of the way. He says, our words and actions are sifted through as well. That the sieve separates and says, so like that, Sometimes we, we have to separate the good words and the good deeds from the evil words and the evil deeds that are done to show what our true character is. The author uses the image of a kiln. Now, if you've ever handled clay, you know you can mold it, you can shape it, but it can be misshapen just like that unless it is fired in the kiln. And if there are any impurities in the clay that goes into the kiln, it'll crack. So you'll see what was wrong. And then the last image he uses is the fruit of a tree. That a bad tree, a rotten tree, cannot bear good fruit. A good tree bears good fruit. All of that reminding us that Sirach says, don't praise anybody until you've had a chance to listen to them. Because our words and our actions betray what is in our heart. St. Paul, writing to that young church at Corinth. You know, this is that section. Paul has been going on about the resurrection and how the resurrection is essential to our faith. And, and then Paul reaches a point of saying to them, and so, if we believe in the resurrection of Jesus, then we must also believe that we are called to live the resurrected life. I remember a cartoon in the old critic magazine way back. I might have been ordained already, but I might have still been in seminary. And for the younger people, the magazine did have color. All right. But... The, the, the picture 
This poor woman is sitting in her house on an orange crate, children all around, and you can tell there is a sense of dire poverty. And the priest is there in his suit and rabbi and says to her, now remember, we're an Easter people, and then walks off. We, we can't say we're an Easter people that believe in the resurrection if we do not serve our brothers and sisters. If we do not live the life of the risen Lord, making him present. Luke. This section of Luke is a continuation of the Sermon on the Plain. Now, Luke gives us several parables all right in a row. Matthew has those same parables, but Matthew spreads them out throughout the gospel. Luke just puts them all in this Sermon on the Plain. Can a blind person lead a blind person? No, obviously not. That they would both trip or they would both fall into a pit that a blind person can't lead another blind person. Now, in Scripture, always remember blindness and sight are also connected to faith. So a person without faith cannot lead a person to faith. Only a person of faith, with the eyes of faith, can guide another person in faith. Luke says that if we are real disciples, then we will want to be like the master. We'll never be equal to Jesus, but we will be like him if we truly are his disciples. Now, I want to go back a minute to that image in Sirach. A good tree bears good fruit. A rotten tree bears rotten fruit. I know I have said this, and I would venture I'm not the only one here this morning that has witnessed something, witnessed someone, and said, huh, the fruit didn't fall far from the tree. And that's not always said in kindness. And, and so Luke says the same thing about a good tree bears good fruit. But then interestingly enough, Luke goes into then judging and says, you know, how can you judge a brother or a sister and accuse them of something when you are doing the same thing or worse? I think so often, and, and I can only speak for myself here, normally the fault I find in others is the one I'm guilty of, and it's much easier to point it out in the other person than to face it myself. I can then step back. And I think that's what Luke is saying, that too often we see that splinter in a brother or sister's eye, and we don't notice the wooden plank that's in our own. And Luke is saying, you know, we have to be willing to put our life, our words, our actions under the microscope of the gospel. We have to allow the gospel to be like that kiln that will purify, that will burn off the impurities and leave what is good. We want to know what a person is like. All we do is listen to the words that a brother or a sister chooses, look at the actions of a brother or a sister, and that will tell us what's in the heart. I saw a quote that I think sums all of this up, and, and you know, 
when I share the quote with you, you might say, why didn't he spare us all this other and just give the quote and move on? But it just struck me when I came across it this past week. Religion is a way of walking, not a way of talking. Monsignor, this catechumen, Danny Evelyn, and these candidates, Sarah Evelyn, Paige Evelyn, Robin Nave Montero, and Diane Matze, are beginning their final period of preparation and purification leading to their initiation. They have found strength in God's grace and support in our community's prayer and example. Now, they ask that they be recognized for the purpose they have made in their spiritual formation and that they receive the assurance of our blessings and prayers as they go forth to the rite of election celebrated next Saturday by Bishop Sticka. Would those who are to be sent to the celebration of election in Christ come forward together with your sponsors and godparents. Dear friends, this catechumen and these candidates who have been preparing for the sacraments of initiation, hope that they will be found ready to participate in the rite of election and be chosen in Christ for the Easter sacraments. It is the responsibility of this community to inquire about their readiness before they are presented to the bishop. And so I turn to the godparents and sponsors for your testimony about this catechumen and these candidates. Have they taken their formation in the gospel and in the Catholic way of life seriously? Have they given evidence of their conversion by example of their lives? Do you judge them to be ready to be presented to the bishop for the right of election? Dear catechumen and candidates, this community gladly recommends you to the bishop who, in the name of Christ, will call you to the Easter sacraments. May God bring to completion the good work that God has begun in you. And I would ask you to come forward and sign the book of elect that will be presented to the bishop next weekend.
Father of love and power, it is your will to establish everything in Christ and to draw us into his all-embracing love. Guide this catechumen and these candidates in the days and weeks ahead. Strengthen them in their vocation. Fill them and build them into the kingdom of your Son and seal them with the spirit of your promise. We ask this through Christ our Lord. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the... Free <coughs> <coughs> and the life of the world to come. Mindful of God's constant love and care in our own lives, we pause to make known our needs and the needs of all our sisters and brothers. That the church humbly accept just criticisms and always look for ways to better proclaim the gospel of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The peoples of every nation deepen a commitment to civil speech, and through family practice, cultivate the minds of all young people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That society may continue to value the contribution of the elderly, and seek new ways for freedom to be shared among the generations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all people of faith excel in the works of charity, giving thanks for God for blessing without number. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those among us who are facing death may have the strong support of family and community and be assured of the victory that awaits the faithful. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a just and lasting peace in all the war-torn areas of our world, especially in Ukraine and in the Holy Land, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, religious life, and good Christian marriage, especially from our parish family, and for those who serve the Lord in the single state, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the silent needs in our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Loving Father, we come before you grateful that you have called us disciples of your Son. Strengthen us that our conduct, word, and deed reflect the fact that we strive to live the life of Jesus who lives and reigns forever and ever. As the altar is prepared, please join in singing number 515, Litany for the Earth. Who bring me the patent and the chalice? The patent and the chalice. God of compassion, creator of all things, for us.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Trusting in your compassion, O Lord, we come eagerly with our offerings to your sacred altar, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Grant this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you. As in joyful celebration, we acclaim... You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held, held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, 
and Richard, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 We pray for the coming of God's kingdom as we pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace, Holy Deacon. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
perfect the body of Christ. The body of Christ in you. Pray the body of Christ. The body of Christ. Go the body of Christ. May the Lord bless and keep you always in his peace and love. The body of Christ. May the Lord bless and keep you always in his peace and love. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Here's the body of Christ. Every the body of Christ. Look at the body of Christ. 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 Aaron, the body of Christ. Play the body of Christ. Mary, the body of Christ.
Let us pray. God of salvation, may the sacrament which strengthens us here on earth bring us to eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. This Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent. Our Ash Wednesday Masses will be at 6 a.m., 9 a.m., and 6 p.m. Also, on the tables in the narthex on the way out are our traditional little black book that has a meditation for each day of Lent. Los libros en español en la mesa izquierda. The ones on the right are in English. Our prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join in singing our recessional song, number 375, Forth in the Peace of Christ We Go.